you so much for staying with us, everyone. The cost of conducting elections in Nigeria gets our attention tonight on the program. INX says it will need about 40 billion naira for the year 2017, considering that there is just one major election, about 19 billion naira, the commission says that it will use to conduct elections this year. Personnel costs are about 20 billion naira. Uh, that's a, a total of about 45 billion naira. Uh, considering all of these costs and the fact that the nation is in recession, one might just be thinking that the nation needs to tighten its bed and reduce the costs of governance and if not, the cost of elections. The CPS, Chief Press Secretary to the INEC National Chairman, Mr. Ruti Mioye Komi, and the Chairman for Partners for Electoral Re Reforms, Mr. Azen Wago, has been talking to us uh, on the program from our Abuja studio. Let me go back to you, uh, Mr. Oye Komi. Uh, like I mentioned before we went on uh, that break, I know that uh, with my own mathematics here, yeah, you said 6,000 staff, uh, in your offices, you have about 800 offices. If you, if you divide that by 36 states of the Federation, that's about uh, over 400 staff per state in Nigeria. Uh, one we wonder, uh, most states don't have elections every time. So what do those staff do when there are no elections? Well, um, your calculation is a bit faulty. Uh, because you know uh, you, you 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 don't have even distribution of staff across all the states. We have the headquarters in Abuja that has the highest number of staff. You know we have, of course, the national commissioners. You have at the headquarters all the directors. You have most of the deputy directors and assistant directors and all of that. And the state, yes, uh, in the local government, election don't take place every time. But that's the way the system is, and of course that's why our chairman has said that, look, um, when people, uh, uh, when we went for the budget defense, for instance, some House of Rest members were asking us, uh, are we not going to employ? And the chairman said, look, we are over 16,000 now, and, you know, not all our staff get busy uh, throughout the year. So we are reluctant to, to, to employ more because we don't want to incur costs. So taking in more people when we don't uh, conduct elections all the time will be, will be quite costly. But there are some basic things you must understand. For instance, the printing of the ballot boxes, I mean ballot papers. You know, um, for instance, the issue was raised that why don't we patronize uh, the local printers? And then our uh, chairman said, look, the capacity is the problem. You know, you are, you are looking at general elections, you have over 70 million registered voters, you have to print over 70 million ballot papers. And there is no capacity among the local printers. Then you have the issue of trust, the issue of security, you know how it is. So those are the issues. Of course, these are the areas where INEC can save costs. But when you don't have capacity and you trust the local printer, and when the time comes, you, you can't meet up, you know how it is in this country. So I think, again, one of the things that we need to appeal to, like my colleague said, is the attitude of the politicians. You know, Ondo was such a very beautiful example. Uh, we had an election, somebody lost, somebody won. And the losers congratulated uh, 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 the winners, and that's really, really a very beautiful thing. So if it stops that way, or if it continues that way, rather, we, 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 we won't have to go for rerun elections, we won't have to print, you know, we won't have to bring uh, ad hoc staff, you know, all these things are very, very expensive. So the attitude about, uh, to, attitude towards uh, election by politicians is also very important, and we need to educate our people to also try and appeal to politicians to uh, abide by the rules and let's play politics fairly, generally. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Wagu, uh, the, the, the table now to your turn. Uh, if you look at some of the costs, of, as, for example, in 2015, it, most of it relied on personnel costs, cost of training the personnel, uh, $10 billion for hazard allowance, uh, ad hoc staff training, $6 billion naira, uh, on a radio for ad hoc staff, 14 billion naira, and all of that. Uh, one would be wondering, why are we not looking in the way of technology to reduce some of these costs? I'm very certain that in other climes, this sort of amount are not being spent. Well, Shimo, I think, uh, though I didn't get some of the first leg of your conversation, but, but, 
uh, from the from the bit that I got, I, I think we need to rethink. There is something we need to rethink. Uh, first, first is the the ad hoc, the whole gamut of ad, ad hoc participation in in INEC elections. I, I think that it was introduced because of the challenge that uh, uh, INEC had at that particular point in time, uh, integrity issues and the rest of it. Uh, Professor Jega thought that one of the ways to shore up the integrity of INEC was to bring in um, his colleagues and then even the youth core members. I think we have to rethink a process in which that has to, within a period of time, build up the institution to be able to uh, do its job properly. That way we'll be able to also save costs because by the time you bring in uh, vice chancellors or universities, lecturers, you throw all of them into elections, the cost that honorarium goes very high. Uh, for how long are we going to continue with that, that process? I don't know, but I think a, a conversation has to start around how we deepen uh, the internal internal governance issues uh, within INEC to be able to uh, ensure that staff who are trained, who have the requisite capacities and competencies, uh, do what they're supposed to do. All right. Uh, for Mr. Inwago and Mr. Yekomi, just as we and bring then, home the, the issues now, uh, the electoral uh, amendment of the electoral act is ongoing, and they're thinking about that. Just in a few seconds, I want both of you to uh, weigh in on what do you think might help when they're considering an amendment that can reduce cost of elections Nigeria is in recession. We need all the money to get our economy back on track. What do you think should be considered majorly to reduce cost of elections in Nigeria? Well, do I go first? Well, you know, Sheung, uh, in other climes, in other climes, you have volunteers, those who volunteer during elections in some other countries. Uh, they don't ask for salaries. Uh, it would have been a beautiful thing, for instance, if the bulk of the ad hoc staff that we have are volunteers who won't ask for, for, for payment. But of course, in this country, you can't engage anybody uh, for free. And honestly, um, I, I'm not sure I can, I can weigh in on which aspect of the electoral act is needed to, to reduce cost. I think generally that if the rules, the, we have strong rules. The rule about abiding by electoral uh, rules and regulations, uh, allowing the whole thing to flow, like we witnessed in those states, where everything went on smoothly, you don't have uh, cases of uh, snatching ballot boxes, you don't have attacks on people. So what was estimated as a cost was what happened. But look at the rivers we run in, in, in contrast. Now we are going back to one of the local governments to conduct, to, to, to finish up what we started. Look at the attacks across the local government. So these are the things that actually increase the cost of election. And I don't think there is any amendment you can, you can do in, uh, 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 as far as the law is concerned that can stop that, that can stop okay. politicians uh, okay. from behaving that way. Maybe again, let me, let, by stipulating policy. Let me allow Mr. Inwago to, to give his closing on thoughts on, on this one. Your thoughts on the amendment and how we can reduce cost. Well, I don't think that uh, the, the, the challenge is not generally the amendment. What, what we're looking for is first that you, we need to decriminalize electronic voting. Uh, in the Constitution, uh, sorry, in the Electoral Act, it is still a criminal effect, uh, offense to, to have electronic voting. I think we need to decriminalize it and ensure that we can vote electronically. That, that will take off uh, the, the paper-heavy component of uh, the process. We, we should right. also take more interest in ensuring that within INEC itself that we continue to show up capacity, show up competence, mm -hmm. and show up in the integrity, integrity level within the institution. All right. So that over a period of time we can, okay. we can continue to, we can ease off mm -hmm. uh, these ad hoc arrangements mm -hmm. that also, 
Good thoughts there. Good thoughts there, Mr. Ezewan Wago, Chairman, Partners for Electoral Reforms, and the Chief Press Secretary to the ANEC Chairman, uh, Professor Mahmoud uh, uh, Yakubo, uh, Mr. Rotimi Oyekomi. Many thanks, gentlemen, for coming on the program, and your thoughts are well taken. Many thanks. Uh, and many thanks also for being part of the show. I'm Sean Wakimale. Bye for now.